Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Roxiano and this is tutorial number four for Visual Novel Maker. Today we'll be talking about custom menus. We saw how to start a project, how to make a scene, and make choices and have those choices matter with variables. The sample project that I created before with my other videos, I created before the update and migrated them. The coding in the menus may have been affected by the update Today I'm going to start with a fresh new project, let's get to it. I already have these message boxes that I am using for Kiss Upload, my game that I'm developing right now, and I will show you what they are. There are different versions of them, ground, hover, and selected. So this is what it would look like if you're not hovering over it. And then when you hover over any of these buttons, they would look like this. And then when you click on them, they would turn purple. So a basic message box would have these buttons on it. Backlog, save, menu, and skip. And they can be wherever you want, depending on how you want to design your message box. So you can make it look however you want. And they can even have different other buttons on it. The default one that comes with the program it has backlog, save, load, menu, skip, and auto. I didn't really see a need to have all of those buttons on it, so I made it a lot more simple. What you can do effectively is give it the exact same name as these and then import them and it'll just automatically replace them. And I'm going to open all of them. And when you go over them, they are the message boxes that we selected instead. So let's see right now where they are actually located. Let's see. They're in common events, message box, show message box. And it kind of explains it a little bit right here, but you can select any of these for ground, hover, and selected. So this is where you would put it if you didn't want to just name it the same and then replace it in the files. Now I'm sure that the hotspots don't match it, so we're going to have to make them match. We got to drag them over to where they should be. This one, if you double click on it, it'll show you where it goes. This one jumps to the log, which is the backlog. So we can drag it right over top of our new backlog button. This one is the save menu. We'll move this one over here for now. So we can drag this over our save button and you want it to go over the whole button so when it, it gets hovered over, it'll change the color you want it to change to. This one would open the load menu. And since we don't have a load button, we can remove the hotspot by clicking on remove hotspot. This one is auto. And we don't have an auto button either on this menu. So we're gonna remove that. There is an auto option in the settings, so the player can just go to the menu and change that mid-game. So I didn't really see a need for the auto. Now that those are all fixed, we can save it and play our game. Let's see how our message box looks. There we go. And this is the sample base project. Okay, so the text is still black, so that's why it looks a little weird. You can't see it because the text is black. We need to change the text color to white. Oh, this is where the text color is. 
Let's see how that looks. Okay, so now her mane is white, but the text is still is not white. Message settings, okay. Color is black down here in the message settings. So we can change that to white. Yep, now she says, hey, who are you? Very clearly. We can also change the position of the text. Like say you want it to be um, a little bit to the right because it's a little too close to these buttons here. We can create the message area. where the area will be just move it over a little bit and move it up a little bit so that it doesn't go all the way to the bottom press ok press save and now we should see a noticeable difference in where the area shows up see now it's to the right of her name when it was before just right under directly underneath her name you can also do a lot of other things with the text, like change the font, the font size, uh, different things about the font, like the bold, italic, small caps, line spacing. You can even have an outline or a shadow behind the text. You can do that for the heading text and the message settings. Message settings also has all of these settings and the option to change the font as well. So I will go ahead and import a font just so you can see how it works. You can import the fonts through the resource manager under fonts. So I've downloaded these fonts from various font sites for my other game Kiss Upload. All of the formats are WOFF and now I'm going to add all of these fonts to the game. And now that we have those fonts in there, we can select font. We will have to type in the name of the font because it doesn't show a menu to select the file for whatever reason. So we can go back to our resource manager, get the name of the font we want. We're gonna put consoles. as the title font for the characters' names. And then we're gonna, for the other one, do agency FB dash reg. Now when we play our game, the font should be different. Ta-da! So that's all the way you can customize the message box. I could go over all of these other various settings, but they're pretty self-explanatory. You can find the menus in the same area as the message boxes. So I'm just going to import my menus. We'll go to the CG gallery. And this will be the CG gallery that I used in Kids Upload. It looks a little different. It still has eight slots in a page, but it only has two pages. We can arrange our hotspots however we want. I'm just going to do that. I'm also going to move these pictures right in the boxes as well. 
So it's not only the hot spots that you have to move, but the little thumbs, because these thumbs are going to be replaced by the scenes that you save in the game. So there would be kind of a preview of where you left off in place of these thumbs. I chose to leave these the size that they are and designed the boxes to be slightly around them so it's kind of outlining what the scene looks like. And since there are already eight slots in this design, we don't have to do anything with these. But if you wanted to change the amount of slots, you would have to remove them and do other things in the CG Gallery common event that is also in here. So these are what calculates the certain slots, and it can be a little bit complicated. That's why I only have eight but we could change this value to however many slots that you have if you wanted to have more or less slots on a page. And same in here. Once you know how to do the CG gallery, everything else would be super easy, like the load menu and the save menu. The settings menu has sliders in it, which are a lot more complicated. I just kept the basic thing the same so that I didn't have to change the size of the sliders or the amount of squares that are in them. But you can change where they're located and move them around and remove certain hotspots as well if you need to. So now we're going to change the save menu and the load menu. I'll change the X just so that they line up as well. And I'm pressing the up arrow to move it up and down. So it'll be the home size. Just like before, it's 748 for the X, and we're gonna make them slightly smaller, 90%. And in the preview, they might not look like they're in the right spot exactly. You see how this looks slightly to the left of the rest? Don't believe that. It's actually not right. It's actually right directly in line with them. Because when we go to the next one, see, it's just fine. Just right in line with the rest of them. And exactly what we did just now for the load menu, I'm going to do for the save menu. Okay, so now we can test our save and load menus. Let's try saving our game right here. Save this, just to make sure the slots work. Ugh, I didn't do the right side, oh well. We know how to fix it anyway, so it doesn't even matter. And we can play with our menus as much as we want. And 
everything is just fine. The CG gallery I'm not going to test because we don't have any images to put in our gallery, but it works pretty much the same way as the save and load menus, except the gallery images are stored in here um, under CG gallery with a full version and a thumbnail version because the th once you click on the thumbnail version, it'll show the full screen version of it. So when you create your gallery images, make sure that they are 720 by 1280 if you're using the 720p resolution. Uh, make sure they match whatever resolution it is and the thumbs can match um, how you put them in in the commands. If you create the thumbs with the big one, just set it to 8% if you have an editor like that and it'll create the right size thumb for your game. I really hope you liked this video and that you'll use this knowledge that I've given you today in your own game. Let me know if you have any other questions or troubles with anything. I'll try my best to answer any questions or help you out. I know that menus can be a little bit of a hard thing to do, but I'll probably be able to point you in the right direction at least. Thank you for watching Creations 101. I hope to see you in the next video.